Hi, I'm Ron Bates, Senior Pastor of The Light Church. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. I hope this message inspires you to love God, love people, and shine His light. Good morning, Light family. Let's go ahead and stand up this morning. Let's get ready to worship. Let's put our hands together.
I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love he knows through generations. I know that he will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who
freed the captives, you're freeing hearts right. You are the same, you are the same. You touch the lepers, I feel your touch right. You are the same, God. you are the same. Give him praise. The same God. Oh, I love that song. The same God. The same God that Moses was, that was with Moses opened up the sea. He can part any sea we face. Amen. The same God that showed Mary favor gives us favor. The same God that healed heals today. He hasn't changed. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Give him praise. You know, I, I love the fact that when I read the scripture, when I read the story, it's not just a story. You know, we have our granddaughter, we read stories too, and they're stories, we read scripture to her, and let me tell you, they're real. And it's not just for someone somewhere back then, it's for us right now today. He's the same God, amen. What a wonderful thing. Give him praise. Amen, welcome to the light. Good to have you here this morning. Good to have those watching online. Good morning, church. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. Do you know that the Lord loves you deeply and immensely? This morning, I wanna to talk to you about the Lord's holiness and about his purity. In Hebrews 12, it says, the Lord God is a consuming fire. As I read that scripture, it was just such a heavy weight. It was like, Whoa. this is for real, okay? God wants to burn up the impurities inside yeah, of us. Amen. He wants us, the things that are causing us to stumble. He wants us to walk holy and in faith, and we can do it with his help, but we have to do something. We have to say, Lord, I surrender this to you, this secret sin, this thing. Lord, whatever it is, the tongue, Lord, I surrender to you. Yes. Be that consuming fire in my life, because if we don't allow him to consume the things in our lives, they will consume us. Here's the righteousness thing. If we allow it and we are consumed with his righteousness, we will live and we will know truth and we will have peace. God is good and he loves you. God is a consuming fire. I believe that. I also believe that, man, we are not gonna leave here the same because God's gonna do something in us, amen? Hey, we're glad you're here. As you find you, as you find your seat, greet someone and tell them it's going to be the best second service Sunday ever. Good morning, church. It's Baptism Sunday. We're ready to celebrate, and all of heaven's going to celebrate as well. We're going to walk out the commandment from Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one. Amen. And first this morning, we have Shelia. Yeah. 
us, yes. It's a celebration. Come on. Come all the way down here. Put my feet down here? Yes, please. There you go, Sheila. And have a seat real quick. Sheila is so excited to finally be able to be baptized and understand what it is and her salvation as it's rekindled again. And Shelia is a cancer survivor. And she knows who the source is of that healing and why you're here. Absolutely. So a chapter in her life, the season, no matter what the age is, I just want to reconfirm my salvation. And this time I want water baptism to show people what God's done and what he's going to continue to do. Amen. So Sheila, based on your confession of the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yep. God can touch you at any age, anywhere, any place, as long as you let him. Next we have Alyssa. So with Alyssa, you know, and I always ask before I baptize, you understand salvation. That's what gets you into heaven. And then what does it mean just to know that your heart has been changed and Jesus has filled it? That's everyone that's being baptized here. And when I spoke with you, Alyssa, she said peace. And it hit her when she was at her house alone is when the Prince of Peace showed up and covered her like a blanket and said, this is the salvation you've been looking for. Receive me, and here comes the peace that you've been looking for beyond any comprehension. He showed up, the peace. She gave her life to Jesus, and you're gonna be sharing that with a lot of people too. So as a princess of the kingdom, based on your confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Prince of Peace, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a glorious day. Hearts touching hearts. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now we have Reed. <laughs> T-shirt says, straight out of the water, I'm highly prized. <laughs> so speaking with Reed, it, it was very noticeable just in a conversation. And uh, actually, it's by phone. But, you know, God moves everywhere. Amen? Yes. When his word goes out, it does not come back void, and it's going to touch you wherever you are. As we were speaking, he's been waiting to be baptized a while. He understands the Lord. And when I asked him, what comes to mind when I say Jesus? What's going on in your heart and your mind when I say that? clear as day, my Lord and Savior, without missing a beat. He knows who his Lord and Savior is in Jesus. He knows who he is. You're going to bring a lot of people. You're going to go share your Lord and Savior, and other people are going to be in this tank one day too, Reed. Amen. Go do what you've been called to do. Amen. Based on your confession that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we have Miles. Have a seat right there. His t shirt says game time. It's on. You know, speaking with Miles, you know, just. Spending time around his family and 
other people in Jesus. He knows who he is. But when he accepted him into his heart, I asked him, I said, what is it that you think of? And he said, I want to be part of God's army. Yeah. Just like King David at any age, when you're called, you're called. And whatever battles or challenges you face, you're good to go. You're recruited. You're in. You're in for eternity for the family of God. You're going to go touch some hearts too, and you're going to bring some people around you to serve in that mighty God's army. Yes. Based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He's ready. It's game time. <laughs> we now have Brody. 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 Have a seat there. Turn this way, Brody. Turn the other way. There you go. There you go. So speaking with Brody just amazing what Jesus put on his heart too, knowing who he is and who he is now. And the one thing he said, it just, it, it warms everyone's heart, but you truly see it in him. And it's gonna continue the rest of your life. Brody, we talked about it. And I simply said, what is it that's in your heart now as we're talking about salvation? He said, light of the world. Light of the world. Your future is bright, Brody. You're gonna be a torchbearer for the kingdom, right? You're a prince of the kingdom. You're going to take that torch with that fire and you're going to touch others and you're going to look up and you're just going to have light of the world starting with you and others. You're going to touch so many people. What a brighter place it's going to be with you, Brody. Light of the world. Based on your confession as Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There we go. Sliding back. You're up. Gets a little slick in there. We're good. Last but not least, we have Declan. Come on up, Declan. All right, here we go. No diving, no jumping, but he can't get here quick enough. Here we go. I'm going to help him out. He has been so excited. Look at that. You can't, he's ready. <laughs> It's okay, Declan, hang on. So uh, we're going to share a little bit, but you stay ready. I like that. So speaking with Declan, I said, what does it mean with, with Jesus? And it uh, comes to your heart. And he said, happy to be on God's team. Happy to be on God's team. We talked about the other team, and he said, I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that chaos. I want to be on God's team because I know that's where I'm going to be. It's a better place to be. You ready, Declan? Yes, you are. You're going to go touch some hearts. You already have. Based on your confession of Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yay. There you go. <laughs> oh, Baptism Sunday. Just the beginning of days to come for everyone here. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for the example of water baptism, but more importantly, your salvation. Amen. Holy Spirit, have your way. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. 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 He ran out of yeah. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the light. We are so, 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 so glad you're here. This is church news. Ha, <laughs> gotcha. You know what it is. It's the church announcements. Men's golf is May 29th. Check-in time is 12.40 p.m. at Panorama. Sign up online for more details. If you haven't signed your kids up for camp yet, why? Are you like Mr. Scrooge or something and you just don't want your kids to have a blast? Yeah, or like the Grinch and you just hate 
fun. Are we just saying Christmas villains? Yeah, I think so. Unfortunately, this is the direction we went and we just have to go with it. That, yeah, yeah. So are you just like Jack Frost and are just cold to a good time? Okay, just Hunter, like don't keep going. It's bad enough. Okay, whatever. Sign up for kids camp, sign up for youth camp. Don't be a Christmas villain. Instead, be straight chillin'. You want more fun? Okay, fine. You twisted our arms. And our ankles. Uh, Kids Light is having a family night of water park fun at the CAC. CAC. Is that the Candles Anonymous cadets? No, honey. No, it's the Children's Aerospace Community. Oh my God, no. No, wait, it's the Cold Applesauce Cooks. That's the one. Mm -mm. <laughs> wait, no, no, no. The Cute Alien Club. It's the Cadro Aquatic Center. Okay, I was close though. You were close. You not at all. This event is for children, youth, and their families. Parents, listen up, homies. You can't drop and ditch. Supervision is 10,000% required. Oh, so registration is required for this event, so make sure you do that. If this is your first time here, we hope you'll make the light your church home. Be sure to fill out the connect card from the seat back in front of you and drop it off at the info desk. To sign up for any classes and events, go to thelightcf.org or download the Church Center app. In Matthew 6, Jesus says, I tell you to never be worried about your life, for all that you need will be provided, such as food, water, and clothing, everything your body needs. As we go through life, we can be tempted to trust in our abilities and power to provide instead of depending on the Lord. If our confidence and hope is in ourselves, it's easy to become fearful or worried when harder times come. But when we trust in the Lord and know that He is our provider, we can rest assured, knowing that He cares for us and He knows our needs. When we know God cares for us as a loving Father, we won't feel like we have to have a death grip on every penny and live life in fear regarding our finances. We can give the way we are called to give into the kingdom of God and put his kingdom first, not our own. I look at giving and tithing as an honor and a privilege to partner with God in what he's doing on the earth. As I give to God, I know that he provides everything my family needs and more. I've seen him do it over and over again. So will you join me today in trusting God and seeking first his kingdom? We are so honored that you choose to give here. You can easily give on our website, on the Church Center app, or you can drop off your donation at one of our giving stations. We love you, Light Family. Now please welcome Pastor Ron Bates to the stage. Yeah, come on, give him praise. We, man, we have already, we have already had church. Y'all know that, right? People getting baptized, I'm telling you what, feet in the air, I love it. That, uh, Miles, uh, that when he was baptized, I thought, man, we ought to get that picture next time we, um, uh, advertiser, let you guys know we're having baptism. Show that picture of his feet in there. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Give God praise again. He is so good. New life. Awesome. Hey, welcome to the light. Glad you're here. Glad for those watching online. We're going to continue with our series on David after God's own heart. I've entitled part four, uh, A Path to the Throne. You know, David had a path to the throne. God's plan for his life, how he was going to get there. A lot of times we have a path that we design ourselves, but God's plan, his path is better. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. And I look at David, and David's, he didn't even ask for the throne. He never pushed for the throne. I see David as one who trusted God for his timing, his method, and everything that God had for him to get to where he was taking him. And when I think of the throne, uh, maybe we're not headed for a throne, but we're headed for something. God has a plan for each one of us, a destiny, if you will, a destination in life, where we're headed. And I believe sometimes we can get in a hurry, and when we get in a hurry, we risk getting ahead of God. And, and David didn't do that. Uh, David also did something else. He asked God questions. God, do you want me to go? Do you want me to stay? It's important to ask God, Lord, which way do you want me to go? And let him do the driving. Can y'all understand that? Let him do the driving. So many times we want to do it, even with its delays and challenges. I see David never taking control himself. He continued to trust God. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking about Ava and I when we got married. I was 22. She was 19. And um, I never did a lot of traveling. And we planned a trip for a honeymoon. We went to the Ozarks. 
Tantara, a resort called Tantara in Ozark uh, in Missouri, Osage Beach, Missouri. And now keep in mind, this is before navigation that we had. We didn't have it. This is before Siri. Hey, Siri, get directions too. We're listening for my phone to go off. You know, it's before that. So we, how many of you remember Rand McNally? The map, right? You get the maps, you know, and you had to look it up. And so we did. And on the map, it had a legend. The legend tells you how many miles it is from point A to point B. And uh, usually like an inch equals a mile or whatever it may be. So I, I did the math. I figured it out. You know, the calculations of how long it would take us to get there. I had it all figured out, so I thought. And so we get to Kansas City where the... Um, uh, flight landed, and our luggage was lost, so we had to wait a couple hours for the next flight for our luggage to come, so we're already off track, and we were going to get there before daylight, but we ended up waiting, it got dark, so just complications, and, and you know, then the stress happens, and this is the first time Ava and I really did any traveling together. I would call this where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> And, you know, uh, I got my way of uh, driving. She's got her way of driving, and it, it got a little tense there, you know. She be, you know, telling me where to go. And how many of you know you're just not supposed to tell the guy where to go? I mean, we don't even ask for directions, you know. And so I remember. But, you know, and here's the thing. That part of the country where we were, there's not a straight road around. They're all curved. So what I thought, what I thought might, might take 30 minutes would take an hour and a half. So it just it got crazy. So we did, you know, it was, it was a little tense there. Hey, but we got there and we made it and things are great. Give God praise for that. But you know, here's the thing. We still to this day after 38 years, we really don't trust each other. <laughs> now, let me clarify. We don't trust each other's driving. You know, yeah, we can, you know, it's like I, I'll get in the car. She'll tell, uh, you know, I'll tell her where to go. She tells me where to go. Ava has an imaginary break on her side, you know, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about, it's an imaginary break. You know, she also, y'all know the trains, they got the pull break, she has one of those, the handles, she'll, she'll you know, I, I thought it, you know, you, you, now we have navigation, it tells you, turn right at the next light, you know, it'll tell you if there's traffic ahead, the danger ahead, you know, but they ought to design a navigation system that says, look out, <laughs> do you see their brake lights, come on. You know, <laughs> I mean, that would be more natural, I think, you know. I could relate better. So I call Ava my nagravator. <laughs> she calls me her nagravator, so it's even, you know. It's even. But, you know, here's what I think. I think, you know, really, we need to just learn to trust each other's driving. Can I get an amen? Come on. Amen. Here's what we really need to do. We need to learn to trust God's driving. Because I believe we do the same thing with God. God, do you see that? God, do you know where you're going? God, hey, stop, God. Go, God. You know what I'm saying? When really we need just to, to sit back and let him drive. Get us to the destination, the place where we're going, and trust that he knows a better path than we know. And relax a little bit. Isaiah 55, 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your... I remember quoting this to Ava when we were driving. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't. know. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Let me, let me give you a, a thought on this. this is, I don't believe this is saying that God doesn't want us to know anything he knows or we can't know anything he knows. Yes, he knows more than we know. We'll never know what he knows. But I believe if his thoughts are higher than ours, why don't we ask him what his thoughts are? He has a better plan than I do. If his ways are higher and his thoughts are higher, why don't I stop sometimes and say, Lord, I don't know what to do here. Your ways are higher than mine. Would you tell me a better way? Come on. Give me a better way. When we seek, we'll find. When we knock, he'll open. He'll answer us. And I believe David was the type of guy after God's own heart that did this. He asked God questions. God, where do you want me to go? And how long, you know, even when it took a while, he would still trust God in the time. He never tried to take the will from God. There were times he was down, he was depressed, but he never take, tried to take the will from God. But I think we do it all the time. And when I think about the path to the throne, David's path to his throne, what's our throne? It's, it's our, our ministry, where we're going, where God is taking us, where our, in marriage, a career, our purpose, those things. 
It could be a current challenge you're facing right now and asking God directions. Lord, how, how do you want me to handle this? Lord, I trust you in this situation. Even with the unexpected challenges that we face and delays, be like David, never trying to take control of it ourselves and letting him do the driving. But I'll tell you this, patience and trust is required. Patience and trust is required. We all have a path. Listen, I, I would love it if God would take me to wherever he's taken me at any season in my life on the shortest path. You know, sometimes when I go somewhere, I like to take the long way. You know, I like the scenery better. Anybody ever take the long way? I just don't want to face the traffic. Maybe it's the shorter way, but I like taking the long way. And I don't care if it's a short way or it's a long way as long as it's God's way. I want to go on the path that he has for me, not the one I might have for myself, because his way is better. So, Father, we come to you this morning, and we thank you for your path, your plan, to where you're taking us, to how you're developing us, shaping us, Father, our calling, our, our, our career, whatever it is in life that you're taking us to, Father, let us trust you with that. As we see David trusting you, Father, at times when he could have taken it into his own hands, Father, made his own way, he chose not to. He allowed you to do the driving in his life, and Father, help us to allow you to do the driving in our life, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. So point number one is this, life is not fair, get over it. (laughs) (laughs) That's bald. Man, that guy's harsh. No, here's what I mean. There's things in life that aren't fair. Look at David's life. There, things weren't fair in his life. And yeah, there were times he was down, but here's what he did. He always got over it. We are what? Overcomers. Don't let the challenge, the roadblock you're facing, the unfairness, the injustice that you might face stop you in your tracks where you are. Let's allow God to help us get over it. Come on. To, to lift us up and get, and get to the other side of it. Don't stay where we are because of a roadblock or something in the way. Rise above the challenge. Don't let the trial get the best of you. When I think of David, I see him as someone that did this, even though there were unfair things in his life. I mean, you, you think about it. He was away from his, his family, his friends. People that tried to help him were, were killed in the process, betrayal. His, his, the king was after him. I mean, David went from this, this celebrated hero to this one running for his life. How fair is that? But he always looked to God. He rose above it. He, in other words, he rolled with the punches. And I think that's what we ought to do as Christians. Why? Because if we really trust that God has our best interest in mind and he's for us and not against us and he, he will deal with us bountifully, then we can have peace as we go through whatever trial we're going through. James says it this way in one, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, James, a bond servant. First of all, understanding what a bond servant is. It's a slave or a servant that had the ability to go free, but chose to stay in his master's house. He chose to stay there. James refers to us as bond servants because we choose. We can go, and go whenever we choose, but we, plan, we choose to stay with God in his house. A bond servant of God and, a Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. He says this, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Listen, I would love to sit here and tell you as a pastor that every time I face a challenge, a trial, that I go, oh, joy. (laughs) I'm just so happy, you know, that I'm faith. No, I don't think any of us are. But when we think about the fact that God might be doing something in us and think about that, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I thank you that you love me enough to build me up, to strengthen me. If we never go through a challenge, we never have a testimony. We never have something to build upon. Count it all joy. In other words, this, this challenge too. Yes, that one too, because scripture says so. Also says this, various trials. Yeah, is this the only one? Think, you know, I remember the one trial I had in my life. That was years ago, and I'll never see another. Boy, wouldn't that be great. <laughs> but there's various trials. What are they doing? Making us perfect and complete. You've heard it said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know, we have to believe that adversity produces something in us. You know, resistance produces strength in us. And he says it produces patience. So I looked up the word patience there. It's from the word hupomone. 
So this is what's happening in us when we're the testing of our faith. It's producing this in us as believers. Endurance. How many of you want some endurance? Endurance. It means the ability to go through difficulties because we're going to have them. I want to be able to go through them, not let them stop me. But to go through them. The more I go through, the stronger I get. And we sang about it today. What God did yesterday, he can do tomorrow for me. He's the same God that was with Moses and, and Mary and, and the God of Jacob. He could do it then. He can do it now. It builds us up when we go through these things. Endurance, steadfastness is what patience is. Steadfastness, it means fixed on course. In other words, it doesn't throw you off course. David said in Psalm 51, 10, created me a clean heart, oh God, and a steadfast spirit. In other words, one that, look, when, it, when the going gets tough, I don't get off course, but I stay on course. As believers, we stay on the course, the path that God has for us. And, and it means this also, patience means consistency. Everybody say consistency. Consistency. I, I like to say it this way. Keep doing the same thing. Keep doing the right thing. Keep doing it. Even when you don't see change, keep doing the right thing. Trust that consistency is going to help you and do something for you. I think of it this way. I want to keep doing the right thing no matter what's going on around me. I think of consistency as being the opposite of hypocrisy. I want to be consistent. I don't want to do one thing here and another thing here. I want to be consistent. I see David as being consistent. Patience, and it means endurance, steadfastness, consistency, character, mental and moral qualities. So I define it this way. Patience is the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose, or you could say your path that you're on, and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and suffering. So it builds character. When we go through uh, challenges, we're not having a pity party, but we're having a prayer party. Come on, come on. We're not just sitting down in sackcloth and ashes, but we're lifting our hands. It says, Scripture says that David strengthened himself in the Lord. There was a time where he could have had a pity party. When he came back to Ziklag and all of his family and those were taken, it says he strengthened himself, himself in the Lord. Instead of losing control, we have self-control. Come on. Consistency. Instead of being self-absorbed, we consider others. Instead of giving up, we press forward. Amen? Point number two is this. Stay on the right path. David's path started out pretty smooth. When you look at his life, you know, he was a, a shepherd uh, a boy out in the field. He's called, he's anointed as king. Look at, look at this. His rise from fame to fugitive, if, if you will, or fame to just running for his life. Things seem pretty good. He's anointed as king. He goes back into the field. He's called up to to sing for King Saul. Now he's in the king's court, in the inner circle, if you will. Then he becomes a hero after he kills Goliath. I mean, things are looking good for David. He's like, man, Lord, things are great in my life. And then King Saul, he becomes King Saul's son-in-law, and then he's celebrated as a warrior. Man, life is good for David. Don't you love it when life is just going good? You know? And then David became, it became challenging for David as people started to recognize David's accomplishments and they started singing about his accomplishments where David is killing his ten thousands and Saul his thousands. First Samuel 18, 8, it says, then Saul became very angry. And the saying displeased him, displeased Saul and said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now what more can have can he have but the kingdom? So Saul, it says he eyed David from that day forward. In other words, Saul said, man, they're singing about David and his great accomplishments. They're only ascribing to me. A th Do y'all see an ego problem here? <laughs> he said, man, this guy, the only thing left is for him to be king. So he turned against him. When it says he eyed him, it means he looked at him to punish him. The evil eye. You know, he was out for him. So David went from this celebrated hero to this one running for his life. Now, let me ask you, does that seem fair? No, but David kept rolling with the punches. For the next seven to eight years, he was running for his life and escaping the attempts of Saul to kill him, but he didn't choose another path. And here's the interesting thing. You know, sometimes when things get so tough, we say, man, this is, I'm done. 
I don't care if it's work, if it's marriage, if it's living for God as a Christian. Sometimes when it gets tough, we just throw in the towel and say, man, I'm done. I'm gonna choose another path. But David didn't do that. He stayed on the right path. He didn't choose an easier path, a different path. He stayed on God's path. And when I think about that, how was he able to do that? I believe because David had a heart after God that he sought God and, and he meditated on God. Because listen, when you meditate on everything that's going bad, all of us would want to run. But in despite of the things that are going bad, when we meditate on God and his goodness and, and he's able to help us overcome anything we face, it'll help us stay on the right path. Amen. And I believe David practiced this in the field as a musician, as a worshiper, meditating on the Lord. It says in Psalm 4, 4, listen to this, this is David. Anybody ever been angry? Come on. Why'd you do that? Well, I was angry. And it's like you're justified. Oh, yeah, okay, I got it, you're angry. No, sometimes, you know, we're gonna get angry. But when we get angry, the Bible says, he says what? Sin not. Self-control. Consistency, come on. Endurance, able to go through the difficulty without losing the, the sight of who you are in Christ. How do you do these things? Stay on course, be angry and do not sin. And here's, I believe, one of the key right here. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Just settle down and think about God's goodness. Come on. It may look difficult for you, but it's not too difficult for God. He can get you through this. I think about... When things are difficult, you know, we, you know, it says when the uh, going gets tough, the tough get going, sometimes they get gone and they're out of here, you know. The disciples are with Jesus, and Jesus begins to say things like, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And some of them are like, okay, that's weird. That, that, I never heard that before. I don't know if I, I don't know about that, you know. I, I enjoyed watching him heal people and all that, but that's just weird. So they leave. Jesus turns to the disciples that are there and said, are you guys going to leave too? I love what they said. Where are we going to go? What other path is there for me? I'm not going to get off this path because you are the one that has the words of life. Where am I going to go? So many times we step off God's path into what we think is a better path, and it's, in, it's not going to lead you where God wants you. It's not going to, you know, the prodigal son did this. What did he say? He said, I, gotta, I better get back on the path of my father. Come on. You know? But David didn't do that. He stayed on the right path. Where are we gonna go? Point number three is this. Relax and let God drive. Just relax and let God drive. I remember I was in um, Colorado with some family one time and uh, me and my brother-in-law, we left early and we were gonna drive from Colorado to Albuquerque, New Mexico in the dark in a rental van and Neither one of us had ever driven this road before, so he jumps in the driver's seat, he takes off, and he's driving. It was dark, he was driving really fast, and um, it was one of those, you know, the roads are like this, and you can see the guardrail, it just pitch black, nothing, but you knew it was like a 400-foot drop-off there, and, and so we stopped to get gas. The first stop, I jumped over in the driver's seat, driver's seat. he come back out, and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm driving, get over there. I, said, I can't relax and let you drive. But God wants us to relax and let him drive. Um, I don't have one, but I've seen videos. I've driven one, a Tesla, electric car that can drive itself. You may have one, I don't know. I don't know about you. I don't know if I could just turn that thing on, on autopilot and let it drive and just sit back. I've seen video, you probably have too, of people falling asleep. They've got video going down the road of people sleeping behind the wheel, a car's driving itself. Not me. I don't care how much they say this car can drive itself. I'm going to be like, I'm just, I'm going to be awake and alert, you know. I don't know. You know they have uh, autonomous trucks delivering products around the nation. They might have a, a monitor as a driver there just sit back watching things. I believe they have, them, uh, I did a little research, they have something already out there experimental doing their own thing on the road. Driverless vehicles. You know, I, I just don't, for me, it'd be, it'd be very challenging for me to sit back and just trust that this car is going to see every brake light and every turn. Come on, right? But you know what? Do you think that that's the way God wants us to allow him to drive? Not that we're just to ignore him, but we're to listen to him, to ask him questions. But sit back and trust that he's going to keep us in the boundaries of where we need to be, that he's going to stop us and pause us when we need to stop. He's going to make us go when we need to go if we're listening and obedient to him. Come on. 
relax and let him drive when we choose our own way. It's a lot more challenging. Do we trust him enough to let him drive? You know, I think when we're younger, we, we learn to trust others. When we're um, a little bit older, we learn to trust ourselves. But when we're mature, we learn to trust God. Amen? When we're truly mature, that we trust him and his path for us. I believe David was like this. David allowed God to drive in his life for the timing, the method, the path, and God's plan for his life. When I was um, about 15 years old, I had a 1972 Ford Maverick. It was not a race car. It had an inline six in it. I don't know if it had 100 horsepower. I don't know. But I had to get on a pavement that had gravel and dust on it to be able to spin the tires, you know, because that's what you do when you're 15 years old. You know, I got my license uh, early because of hardship. My mom didn't drive. So I had my buddies in the car with me. They didn't drive. So we're just running around being 15-year-old, 16-year-old teenagers. It was either 4th of July or New Year's Eve because we had fireworks. There were fireworks involved. And we were driving around being very good obedient citizens, as far as you know. And uh, anyway, so I turned this corner, and my, my buddy Robbie was sitting next to me, and I, and I felt the back end slide around. I thought, this is cool. So I hit the gas in that, I don't know, 75-horsepower car, and it started sliding on the dirt and going back and forth, fishtailing. And I had it all under control, maybe. But Robbie felt compelled to reach over and grab the steering wheel and pull it, and we ended up in a ditch. Yeah, I know. And then him and Michael, my friend that was with me, they abandoned me and left me there because they were afraid. So I'm just, my car's in the ditch, you know. So I think that's what happens when we try to jerk the wheel from God. Not that I was God, but you know what I mean. We don't trust him, right? Yeah, right. There was a direct TV commercial a while back that says, when you're on hold with your cable company, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you blow off steam, you get hurt. When you get hurt, you get a patch on your eye. When you get a patch on your eye, you look tough. And when you look tough, people want you to prove it. And then this guy gets beat up and he's in a roadside ditch. Y'all remember that? <laughs> and the end of the deal said, don't end up in a roadside ditch, you know. Switch to satellite TV or something, you know. I thought, don't end up in a roadside ditch, let God do the driving, amen? Give God praise. He drives better than we do. So he never tried to take the wheel. David didn't. He, he trusted God. And, but here's something so important about David, and we have to understand this. Yeah, we want to let God do the driving. We want to trust him. But we have to ask the questions. We have to ask directions. All the men said, amen. Come on. We got to ask directions, Men and women alike, we said, Lord, which way do you want me to go? David did this. He asked the questions. Lord, do you want me to pursue? Do you want me to say, what shall I do? He was a man after God's own heart. If we're not asking questions to God about the direction we're going in, then I don't believe we have the heart after God that we need to have. But David asked the questions. Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? He, he was willing to ask these things. Psalm 27, 11 says this, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead. What is this? Lord, I want to know your direction. Show me what's the best way. I trust in you. And he says this, lead me, or we can say this, steer me in, the, in a smooth path. How many of you want to travel a smooth path and not a rough one? Then let him do the driving. Trust him because of my enemies, he says. David's lowest point, I believe, was when he was in a cave. Now, keep in mind, at this point, you know, David's path to the throne. He was celebrated. Then Saul is eyeing him, wanting to punish him and kill him. David's running from Saul. He's, he's lost his family, his, his friends. He's got his, his soldiers, uh, faithful soldiers are with him. He's lost Samuel, uh, the prophet. He's, he's lost that. So he's isolated and he's in a cave hiding. I believe this is David's, David's lowest point in his life. And here's what I think is important. Sometimes when we're at the lowest point in our life, I believe that's when we start reaching for the wheel. I can do this better my way. And all we need is somebody to nudge us on. Man, if I were you, I'd do this. You're right. I'm, give me that wheel, Lord. You know what I mean? I mean, like, you're just, you're just like up ready to burst. And somebody just has to poke you a little bit. And there you go off on your own way and you get off track, David didn't allow himself to do that. Why? He was consistent. 
the, the trials he went through built something in him. He was, he was consistent wherever he was. So he's, he's at a low point here, and Saul's pursuing him, and he's in a cave. Now, I want you to understand something. So he's in the cave hiding. Saul is looking for him. Saul does not know he's in the cave. And Saul and his army are, are there, and Saul has to go relieve himself. He has to go to the restroom. So he says, hey, hey, there's a cave. So he goes into the cave to relieve himself where Saul and his army is hiding out. He doesn't, I mean David, where David is hiding out, thank you. So he goes, and look at verse four. This is 1 Samuel 24, verse four. Then the men of David said to him, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand. Now think about this. God is not saying this. They're saying this. You know what they're doing? They're egging him on. David, here's your chance, man. Here's your chance to choose your own path. You're supposed to be king anyway. You're going to take his place. Here's your chance to make your own destiny. Behold, I will deliver you from your enemies, your enemies into your hand that you may do to him as it seems good to you. In other words, just do what you want to. Whatever seems right to you, you just do it. Beware of that. Don't take matters into your own hands. God, what do you want me to do? Not what these people, not what my friends are telling me to do. Come on. Listen, if your friends are egging you on to do something that goes against what God wants you to do, you need to get around some different friends. Or you need to bring some correction there or stand strong in your faith in the direction God wants you to go. And David arose and secretly cut off just a corner of Saul's robe. That's all he did. But verse 5. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's. He didn't kill him, but it still bothered him because he, he did that to show something. He just cut off his robe, but then he was convicted about it. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand, my hand, to take it upon myself for me to grab the wheel, in other words, against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with these words and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. So David did not cave in the cave. He didn't cave under pressure from his friends. He stuck true to what God wanted. We have to do the same thing. Trust God's timing, God's method for the destiny where he's taking you. Amen? Trust him in that. And, he had an, and I thought about, how does this relate to me? Or how does it relate to us? You know, maybe we've had times where we felt like, man, I, I want to get even. Here's my chance. Maybe something happens. You know, man, here's my chance to get back. Here's my chance to get on Facebook and tell them what I really, come on. Here's my chance, you know. No, let, listen, God is your defense. God is your reward. God is your refuge. Trusting, David, trust, I don't need to put my hand. God will take care of this. I don't need to do it. I'm going to trust God. Whatever God wants to do with him, he can do. That's not my business. My business is to make sure that I'm walking the path that God wants me to walk and be consistent in that path. Come on. That's what he wants. Don't take the wheel. You know, here's the thing, too. Uh, Lord, open every door that needs to be opened and closed, every door that needs to be closed. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing if we could just walk through life, hey, that door's open, I think, listen, that'll get you in trouble going when doors are open, you know. What we need to be praying is, Lord, let me know which door is open for me and which door is open that I should go in. Come on. Lord, let me know which door is closed that I need to stay away from and which door is shut that I need to pray and see you open up for me. Come on. That's the prayer we need to pray. So every door that opens isn't from God. But see, David had another chance. David could look at this. Oh, here's a door, open door. I can kill Saul. Here's my chance. No, Lord, it seems to be open, but what do you say? What do you say? What do you say, Lord? Had another chance when Saul was camped out near David and it says here in 1 Samuel 26, 7, notice David never took the matter into his own hands. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and there Saul lay asleep, lay sleeping within the camp, with his spear stuck in the ground by his head, and Abner, his armor bearer, Saul's armor bearer, and the people lay all around him. Then Abishai said to David, this is David's armor bearer, so here's his buddy nudging him, hey, David. God has delivered your enemy into your hand this day. Now, therefore, please let me strike him at once with the spear right to the earth, and I will not have to strike him a second time. It'll be done. 
Here's your chance, David. Here's your chance, David. Come on. Come on, David. Take this. You know, we have, we have the enemy and people egging us on all the time. We have to step back and go, no, 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 no. God, what do you say in this moment? What do you say in this moment? But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, furthermore, listen, here's key. This is a key thing right here. This is, this is how David was able to not allow himself to take the will from God. This is how we will be able to not allow ourselves to take the will from God, because this is what he believed. David said, furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him. The Lord will take care of him. Or, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go out to battle and perish. In other words, I don't know how God's gonna do it, but it's God's business. God will take care of that situation. I don't need to get involved. I'm just gonna stay on track on the course that God has me on, amen? I'm not gonna try to do God's job for him. He trusted in God's path to the throne no matter what. Somebody give God praise. Go ahead and stand with me. I'm gonna close with this. So, David was in the cave, and I believe that this was, if not the lowest point in David's life, this was a very low point in his life. This is the point where many of us would allow the enemy to speak to us and our people to egg us on to do what we want to do and not what God wants us to do. But if we have a heart after God, we will choose to say, Lord, I, I got all these voices around me telling me what to do. Well, Lord, I want to trust you. I want to walk on your path to my throne, your path to my destiny, where you're taking me, Lord. I don't want to take the wheel and go in a direction you don't want me to go. This is David's prayer while he was in the cave at possibly his lowest point. Psalm 142.1, a prayer of David. I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. Anybody ever have a complaint? Lord, why is this happening to me? I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. We lay it out for him as if he didn't know it. When my spirit was overwhelmed, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm up to here within me. And look what it says. Then you knew my path. Oh. Lord, I'm beside my, I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know. I, I just got all this thing, these things I'm facing I don't have anybody to talk to, but Lord, you know my path. You know my path, Lord. You know where I've been, and you know where I'm going. You know where I should go. You knew my path and the way in which I walk. They have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. I'm all alone. Refuge has failed me. There's no place I can run. No one cares for my soul. I'm alone. I'm abandoned. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge. David strengthens himself in the Lord. My portion in the land of the living, attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me. Listen to this. For you shall deal bountifully with me. Look, I might be surrounded with trouble, but you deal bountifully with me. Come on. You deal bountifully with me. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we see David as someone who, Father, things went south. But Lord, he stayed on track with you. He stayed on your path to his throne, his destiny. Father, let us learn from this, no matter what we face in our life, Father, to, to understand the testing of our faith produces patience, endurance, consistency, steadfastness in our life, character. Father, it strengthens us so that we can go through difficult times. Let us be like David in the lowest points in our life that we may be in at times, Father. To not take matters into our own hands, to understand that you know our path, you know where we've been, you know where we're going. Father, you see us, you are our refuge, and you deal bountifully with us, Father. We thank you for that. So whatever path you have, whatever challenge we're facing right now, Father, we will trust you in it. To overcome the unfair circumstances, to trust you to take the will of our life, Father. 
to relax and let you drive. I want everyone to know here that God has a plan for you. He has a specific plan for you. And we have to trust him in that. And not try to force it and make, make our own way, but, but listen and ask like David did. Lord, do you want me to go here? Do you want me, do you want me to go right, left? Just stop, pause, go. For, Father, what do you want me to do here? Let him take care of the challenges in our life as we listen to him. But here's something that's important. So we all have a, a destiny, a plan, a purpose in our life. But God has a plan for each one of us that's the same. And it begins with Jesus Christ. You see, we can't get on his path and his plan to our destiny until we get on board first with Jesus Christ. So I wanna pray this first. I wanna pray for each one to have patience and listen to God for where he's taking us. So Father, I pray for each one in this room that we have patience and we trust you for where you're taking us. But I also wanna pray for those that haven't even gotten on your path yet that they might accept Jesus Christ. Father, your plan, your, your, your pre-planned destiny for us to accept Jesus Christ. Lord, we have a free will, but you made a way for us to choose and to, to get on board with your plan. Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined, he made a plan ahead of time to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. If you're here today and you say, I wanna get on God's path, it starts with accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you're here in this room or you're watching online, I wanna pray for you to accept Jesus Christ. And get, listen, get on board with his plan. If you're here today and you don't know where, if you're on the plan, if you're on his path, then you need to pray this prayer with me. So if you're here and you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I wanna accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I wanna get on the right path for my life. Would you just acknowledge that with an uplifted hand? I'm gonna pray for you right where you are. Say, that's me. That's me. Thank you. Father, I thank you for each one in this room. I thank you that we know where we stand. Father, I pray that you help us to be like David, a man after your own heart, someone that seeks you, Father, understanding that your plan is better than anyone we can make for ourselves, Father. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. Give him praise. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, two things. If, if, I, I don't know if I miss anybody, but if you said that prayer, we're gonna have prayer partners up here in just a minute. Come and pray with someone. Also, if you didn't raise your hand and you're born again and you've never been baptized, sign up. We had six amazing baptized today, uh, baptisms today. Sign up and get baptized. Give him praise. Yeah. What an incredible word this morning, amen? You know, if you've been holding on to the wheel, it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. Let him direct your path because he'll direct it straight. So if that's you this morning, you've just been holding on to the wheel, I encourage you to come up and get prayer this morning to change your path, to be humble and just change your path. And as Pastor said, if you raised your hand, whether it be up or in your heart, just come up and get prayer this morning. Continue the new journey. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you loved us first so that we can learn to love you and learn to love others. So Lord, I pray that you would bless every single person in here as they go their own separate ways, God. And Lord, that they might be able to help somebody else to let go of the wheel and let you guide their path. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. You're dismissed.